This is City TV everywhere. Ten more. City Pulse, what Toronto's talking about tonight. Good evening. Quarantine tonight for 500 members of a Toronto religious community as the SARS crisis deepens. We did not expect to see this number of cases arising within this tight-knit community. Health officials have linked SARS cases they previously thought were unrelated. And tonight, 500 members of a religious community group in Toronto are now under quarantine. We're very concerned about the extent of illness in this group, and we really seek the ongoing cooperation and assistance, not only of the leadership, but also of the membership at large in curtailing and finally stopping this outbreak. The cases, 10 probable and 19 suspected, spread among the members of the group known as Bucas Luv Dios Covenant Group. Two other people treated by an infected physician have also been diagnosed with the virus. Officials believe some members of the group may have first become exposed to the virus at the Highland Funeral Home at the city's East End two weeks ago when they attended a funeral of a victim who died of the disease. That introduced the virus into the community. It was passed on at prayer groups and religious functions, but all the cases can be traced back to Scarborough Grace Hospital. The current SARS outbreak is still traceable by hook or by crook back to that original index case that first developed symptoms on February 23rd. Tonight, three of the cases involve children under the age of 10. All are being treated at SickKids Hospital and are said to be in good health. Officials say a number of people in this group showing SARS-like symptoms did attend an emergency somewhere in the city of Toronto. And while they say hospital officials did follow all the proper procedures, none of them were admitted. And in the end, they did have SARS. Because those patients had no obvious link to another confirmed case or a closed hospital, doctors figured it wasn't the virus. Tonight, health officials are changing the hospital protocol, so anyone displaying certain SARS symptoms will now be presumed to have the virus, even if there is no connection to another case. So far, 13 people have died of the virus here in Ontario. Tonight's revelations raise a concern of the possibility SARS could spread further into the general population. Time will tell how long it will take for this to be absolutely under control. The law says if you are under quarantine, you must obey the rules. You could be heavily fined for breaking them. Officials say if you have any respiratory symptoms, to stay home. Tonight's setback in the fight against SARS comes just hours after the Centers for Disease Control expressed optimism about containing the virus. In Canada, uh, it does look like the outbreak has been contained and that so far uh, we're seeing very limited transmission outside of travelers to the affected areas. Canadian and U.S. scientists have independently cracked the genetic blueprint of the virus believed to cause SARS. It could be the breakthrough doctors need to control the bug. We're going to give you some important numbers now if you have any questions about SARS. If you think you've been exposed, here are the symptoms. Headache and muscle pain, a fever of more than 38 Celsius or 100.4 Fahrenheit, plus a cough or shortness of breath or difficulty breathing. For more information, you can call Telehealth Ontario or our City Pulse City phone. You can also log on to our City Pulse website at pulse24.com. So to recap, now 500 Toronto members of the Bucas Lube Sadios Covenant Group have been placed under quarantine tonight. Many were exposed to SARS after some members attended a funeral of a SARS victim. There are now 287 probable and suspected cases in Canada and more than 3,100 worldwide. Our other big story tonight, the Leafs pull off an amazing 4-3 double overtime win with Canada's Masters of Golf in town tonight for the big game. Captain's here with an early look now at sports. Captain. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Even the sushi-swilling suits and the Platinums got into tonight's Game 3 versus the Flyers. And it was Masters champ Mike Weir setting the mood down at the ACC. 90-second standing ovation for the little lefty from Brightsgrove who dreamed of playing hockey but took up golf because he was too small. As for game three, we're into the second OT frame here and it's defenseman Thomas Carberlay who sends the ACC crowd home happy. His second of the game. Slivovitz for everybody. Leafs win it 4-3 in OT to take a 2-1 series lead. As for that other big win yesterday at Augusta, here's Weir on his whirlwind tour. Well, uh, kind of buzz from yesterday, obviously. I uh, had a long night. Um, we didn't leave Augusta until after midnight, so it's been a long day. And um, 
still pretty excited. You know, a lot's been happening today, and uh, just be nice to sit back tonight and enjoy the game. Well, they gotta they gotta persevere. I mean, they gotta uh, dig deep today, and um, you know, still early in the series. You know, they're, they're gonna play well tonight. I'll have more from Mike Weir, all those Leaf highlights, plus the Leafs' offense takes a hit. McGillney left the game in the second OT frame, as did Roberts. That's all coming up, and for now, it's back to Alex. All right, Catherine, it was a thrilling night for hockey fans coast to coast, but it's a night one young Toronto boy is never going to forget. Emery Green's live with that story, Emery. Well, Alex, it was a dream come true for Ari Levine, a cancer fighter. He got to catch the action live while other Leaf fans packed bars like this one right here for the unbelievable roller coaster ride. Why on earth are you doing this? Brian McCabe, what can I say? He's one hell of a player. And, you know, everybody likes a mohawk. Edward Stanley Cup scissor hands. The fans came out in droves from the tall to the small. Let's get the game started. Care to interpret? That's Philly's going down, and that's what they're going to be doing, crying after the game. <laughs> go Leafs, go. Well, is there any other team but the Leafs that uh, we're going to go all the way? Okay, admittedly, Leaf fans are an interesting bunch, but there's one fan here who's particularly interesting. In fact, it's a bit of a good luck charm for another hockey team. Ari Levine's been a good luck charm for his older brother's hockey team. You see, since cancer treatment robbed him of his hair, the boys have taken to rubbing his head for good luck. Are you going to be a good luck charm for the Leafs? Maybe. Are you thinking good luck thoughts? Uh, yeah. A lot more than luck has Ari sitting in these platinum seats, though. He plays hockey himself, and even through his chemo, he made it out on the ice. The Leafs were so impressed, they gave him a courage award this Saturday, and the fella sitting next to him gave up his two platinum seats. You could give up just about anything for this kid because he's uh, the most courageous kid you'd ever meet. You can see closer, you can see that the goal is better. Is this the coolest thing you've ever done? Uh, yeah. Well, it looks like Ari was a good luck charm for the Leafs, and hopefully their victory tonight will give him the strength to uh, keep up with his continuing chemotherapy. Live from the Harbor Sports Grill, I'm Anne Marie Green. Back to the newsroom. What a cutie. Okay. And a big game in the political arena tonight in Quebec and a big loss for the sovereignist movement. Quebecers vote out the reigning party Québécois and hand liberal Jean Charest a massive majority government. Today, the people of Quebec have given the Liberal Party a mandate for change. We will be the government of all Quebecers. We will be a government of respect, of dignity, and transparency. Ray's Liberals won 45% of the vote. It was a blow to the Separatist Party Quebecois, which gained 33%. Separatist Party was seeking a third consecutive mandate. The relatively new Action Democratique du Québec took 19%. Now that the PQ is defeated, there is no chance of a referendum splitting Quebec from Canada for several years. And we're going to go live now to Aphrodite in Montreal tonight to find out what Quebec voters there think about their new premier, Aphrodite. Well, Alex, opinion here in Montreal is divided tonight, but this election has been one of the most interesting in recent history here in the province of Quebec, as well as one of the most dramatic from polls swinging all over the place to the final results. Inside, Quebecers of all stripes cast their votes. Outside, they're eager to share their thoughts on what they think will be the best outcome. Jean Charest's liberal and their promises of getting more cash from Ottawa. Bernard Landry's Parti Québécois promising family-friendly policies. Or Mario Dumont's ADQ vowing to cut taxes. This man voted for the liberals. 400,000 Anglophones have left and are now living in Toronto. We pay higher taxes than any other province and I don't think Quebec is user-friendly, so it's time for a change. Others stick staunchly with the Parti Québécois and their nationalist stance. Est-ce que tu veux un autre référendum? Oui, je, je tiens un autre référendum, savoir quand. Euh, je ne sais pas à quel moment ça pourrait être l'idéal, mais euh, j'espère qu'on va pouvoir se mobiliser les Québécois encore ensemble. Don't be fooled. Francophones aren't the only ones who support the Parti Québécois. Right now, I'm happy with the PQ. I mean, I, I don't know what the Liberals are going to do, but PQ is fine for me. The Liberals have traditionally been much better at getting their supporters out to vote. The Parti Québécois knew it and tried to counter with their own strategy. Premier Bernard Landry urged Quebecers to bring their friends out to the polls. 
still over the course of the 33-day election, Jean Charest's liberals managed to sweep up. We prefer liberals because we don't want separation at all. <laughs> we want to be in Canada. <laughs> we want to be Canadians. And as you can see, it might be raining here on the streets of Montreal, but nothing could rain on Jean Charest's parade tonight. Again, the Quebec Liberals have ousted the Parti Québécois. That means there won't be a referendum anytime soon. And tonight, outgoing Premier Bernard Landry and the ADQ's Mario Dumont warmly congratulated the Liberals on their win. Live on the streets of Montreal, I'm Aphrodite Salas. Now back to the newsroom. Okay, Aphrodite. Now the latest from the war in Iraq and the Pentagon tonight says it's all but over. Shad Muslims hold a huge demonstration in the Iraqi holy city of Sajaf, chanting no to Saddam and no to America. Saddam Hussein's hometown of Tikrit fell with surprisingly little resistance today. Tonight, Washington's turning up the heat on Syria as hostilities taper off in Iraq. The major combat engagements are over because the major Iraqi units on the ground cease to show coherence. We have seen the chemical weapons tests in Syria over the past 12, 15 months. They should review their actions and their behavior, not only with respect to who gets haven in Syria and weapons of mass destruction, but especially uh, the support of terrorist activity. Fires broke out today in Baghdad Library at a fuel depot near Basra. U.S. Marines are helping Iraqi police arrest looters as the war-torn nation awaits humanitarian food supplies. And you'll find lots more on all our top stories by logging onto our City Pulse website at pulse24.com. Straight ahead on your Pulse on Health, why workout weary mums need a break. Stay with us. Hey, I'm Vlogger Dennis. Coming up tonight, Margaret Atwood launches her 11th and latest novel. It's called Oryx and Crake. I'll have a look at that and a whole lot more coming up later in Showbiz. I'm Catherine Humphreys. Coming up, Game 3 against the Flyers. More like a soap opera than a game. We've got that. All the other NHL action, plus Jason Moore. It's all coming up a little later in sports. The all-new Honda Pilot comes with an advanced four-wheel drive system and the most interior space of any eight-passenger SUV in its class which means it's great for getting away from it all. Hey, where are you going? To get some peace and quiet. Or not. The all-new Pilot from Honda. Protecting your family is a 24-7 job. But is your life insurance doing its job? With a variety of life insurance options, we'll help you be absolutely sure you've got the right coverage and the protection you need. We live where you live. For life insurance, talk to your neighborhood State Farm agent. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In your Pulse on Health tonight, soon-to-be moms should take it easy at the gym. A new study shows pregnant women who do exercises that push their heartbeats beyond 150 pulses per minute may cause irregularities in their baby's heartbeat. This irregularity has been linked to premature labor and miscarriage. And another warning for women tonight, those who are heavy coffee drinkers and take hormone replacement therapy could be at higher risk for developing Parkinson's disease. According to new research, those women who take HRT but don't drink lots of caffeine are at a lower risk. I'm Laverty Batista, and that's your Pulse on Health. The Princess Margaret Hospital Foundation Home Lottery. You have just three days till the early bird deadline in the Princess Margaret Hospital Foundation Home Lottery to win the incredible Aston Martin Early Bird Prize. There are 13,010 amazing prizes in all, including our largest grand prize show home ever. Just three days till the early bird deadline. Call the number on your screen. Thank you and good luck. Buying a house can 
or selling, a Coldwell Banker agent is your perfect partner in real estate. And with our concierge service, we can get you all the help you need to turn your house into a home. Coldwell Banker! Come on, log on. Welcome back, a double overtime thriller at the ACC. Tonight, Catherine's here with highlights. Thanks, Alex. You know what? Everything pointed to a Leaf loss tonight. Leaf seemed uptight at practice today. Roenick's hair, perfectly coiffed. Never a good sign. Just eight minutes in, it was two zip flyers. And time running out in the second OT, McGilney leaves the game after taking a high stick, followed to the dressing room by Roberts. Yet, as Mike Weir predicted before the game, the Leafs persevered. He's psychic, he is. He could start his own hotline with Davis Love III. Or not. First period. It's a wide open Eric Weinrich who opens a scoring, and I just feel the yellow visor clashes with the orange. That's all I'm saying. Desjardins made it two zip before the Leafs got to check Manic. Still the first, Reichel pots the rebound. It's 2 1 Flyers. Second period, Lee power play, and Reichel again, the unselfish pass to Coverlay, who one times it. We're tied at twos. Still the second. Tucker takes down a pair of Flyers, giving McGilney room to maneuver his fifth of the playoffs. It's 3-2 Leafs. But just three minutes into the third, Mark Recchi roofs it. And we're tied 3-all. Now, the first OT decided nothing. In the second OT, Jeremy Roenick, perhaps angered he can't show off his perfect hair, high sticks McGillney under the chin. He did not return. But a few minutes later, Coverley. He's trailing Sundin and Renberg on the play, grabs the rebound and scores. 4-3 Leafs win to take a 2-1 series lead. As for McGilney, he was seen in the locker room afterwards talking to teammates. That's encouraging. Meanwhile, Roberts took, uh, left the game after blocking a shot. X-rays were negative. He was walking around the dressing room. Good news. Game four goes Wednesday. As for tonight, here he is, Thomas Coverlet. You know, it was nice to get uh, win in overtime. And, you know, both teams play pretty much three lines and stuff on everybody. And everybody has to just think about the game four right now. Yeah, we have to play a lot better. Uh, we talked about it, and uh, you know, being at home uh, definitely helps. And uh, hopefully, we can uh, continue doing that, uh, carry it over the next game. I, I got my legs uh, late as, as the game went on, and it felt better. And uh, that's a play there. We're trying to come around the net, try to put something in front there. And, and Thomas, I think, has seen me go on, gone around the net like that now for a few years. And he went in there, and uh, and uh, uh, Michael Remba did a great job driving the net and pushed, uh, I think, both Czech Manic almost and, and one of the defensemen uh, in front of him. The so Long Island now sends visiting Nassau Coliseum with their series knotted at one. Second period, Isles up to one. The sends Chris Phillips beats Garth Snow on the redirection for his first of the postseason. Sends this thing into OT. Like the Leaf tilt, this thing went to a second OT frame. Todd White, the hero, another deflection. This one from Alfredson, or Arvidsson, sorry, and Rakunik sends win 3-2 to take a 2-1 series lead. Game four, Wednesday. Well, clearly Waugh and the Avs were merely toying with Minnesota in game one. Colorado in total control tonight. Goalie Dwayne Rollison caught wandering. Woo-hoo, the net's open. Hi, hon. Alex Tongay scores. Forsberg the assist. Second period now, and a lovely one here by Captain Joe Sackick. Wheels in, lets her rip. Forsberg got the other as the Avs win at three zip and lead the series 2-1. Waugh, 18 saves for the shutout. Game four, Wednesday. Also, the Canucks in St. Louis with their series tied at one. Nash run into the board from behind by Daniel Sedin. Nash would return, though, in the second. Second period, Pavel Dimitra from Stillman. On the power play, he beats Kluche, and it's one zip blues. They get another before the second period is through. Another blues power play. Doug Waite with his second of the playoffs. Bertuzzi, Nasland, and Morrison once again held scoreless. 3-1 Blues the final game for Wednesday. Ducks and Wings going at it as well. It's now one zip Ducks in the second. Ducks lead that series two zip. Well, Mike Weir's Masters win shot him up to fifth place from 10th in the world rankings today. The highest ever for a Canadian. This afternoon, the Masters champ 
was sandwiched between the automotive department and ladies' lingerie at a downtown Sears store, perhaps looking for some polyester green slacks to match the jacket. But no, it turns out he was there for an appearance to unveil his new golf line accessories. Timing is everything. Keep going, no. Keep going, yeah, we're going to do the press conference. Right here. If they would have had this deal for Mike Weir here a couple of weeks ago, they still would have had a good crowd. I mean, he was playing better than anybody else in the world. But after the Masters yesterday, well, it's an absolute zoo. How many people here today, sir? Oh, thousands. Yeah, thousands. thousands. The best players in the world had a shot at Weir yesterday. They all fell by the wayside, except for Len Matisse. He played out of his tree. Weir needed this one on 18 to tie. Eight-footer in the back of the cup. First playoff ball, bingo, Weir's the Masters champ. I know the significance of it. Um, there, there hasn't been a, um, a Canadian Winter Major Championship, let alone uh, the Masters. Um, you know, as a kid watching um, the Masters on, on television, that's pretty much uh, what inspired me to, to try to pursue golf as a career. And watching Jack in 86, um, I'll never forget that tournament. So pretty special. Okay, Alex, you got a couple of Weir hats there? Yeah, I do. Now you got to stand in line for about four hours to get them signed? That's right, yeah. Uh, is it worth it? Definitely. Thank you very much for, for supporting and, and coming out today. Really appreciate it. Thanks. I'm Jim McKinney for City Pulse Tonight. You the man, Mike. We didn't have time for the Jays. They lost. 10, what was it, 10-9 we'll was the final. Mike. We didn't have time for that. They, they kept it close. Michael Jordan played in his final home game of his NBA career tonight, mm -hmm. and his uh, Wizards lost 93-79 to the Knicks. Too but bad. on a happier note, that might here. Yeah, nice, and nice the Leafs. Guy. Who yeah, knew? Yeah, you know, it was very hard to actually write any news. It was like, <laughs> SARS, score, <laughs> SARS, score, you know. So, yeah, exciting. Thanks. No problem. It's time for a quick break here on City Pulse tonight. We'll have entertainment and your five-day when we come back. <laughs> Today's lesson, China is really far away. Sunlight liquid, go ahead, get dirty. It's the postmodern struggle for self-revelation, grinding against the desire for anonymity in a world of overexposure. got to shave a minute. And we'll work with you to find solutions that answer your unique needs. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken, of course. Original recipe chicken. Ten pieces of juicy seasoned chicken. Large crispy fries, gravy, and two medium salads. And that's not all, because after all that comes the eggs. A family-sized bag of Cadbury mini eggs. So now you know. The chicken does come before the egg, but only with the Easter Feaster from KFC. It's finger licking good. And your entertainment's next, a new work from Canada's most celebrated.
celebrated and decorated author, George. Thank you very much, Alex. Surely Margaret Atwood deserved a rest after her 2000 release, The Blind Assassin, won Britain's coveted Booker Prize. But the muse had more to say, hence her new novel, Oryx and Crake. It's sci-fi-esque, more about inner space than outer space, taking readers into a future that's familiar and beyond our imagination all at the same time. I began the book in March of 2001 when I was in, on book tour in Australia, but we were also doing some birding, and that's when I started the book. I have a, a lifetime of growing up with the biologists and reading uh, pop science for fun, so I've been looking at recent developments with much interest. With a command of her material and her trademark sharp wit and dark humor, Margaret Atwood is at the top of her game with Oryx and Crick, her latest novel. It ends up being sort of a sister novel to The Handmaid's Tale, her 1985 classic in which the future was seen as quite dark. This time, however, it's even darker. 9-11 came smack dab in the middle of writing this book. What, how did it influence the text at all, or you? Yeah, well, I stopped writing the book for about three weeks and glued myself to the television, just like everybody else. Yeah. And what particularly uh, caught my attention was the anthrax narrative, which still has no ending. We don't know where that came from, but it has all the earmarkings of an inside job. And I'll leave you with that, with that thought. Read it, read it and shiver. Yeah. <laughs> Advanced copies of Margaret Atwood's Oryx and Crake are available at Book City Outlets. 40 bucks for the hardcover edition, and it's published by McClelland and Stewart. The Osbournes are at it again. L.A. police are investigating a fracas at a sushi joint over the weekend. The family was dining when a cat fight occurred between Sharon and a disgruntled talent agent who'd been scratched from their party list. Reports say that Sharon spit at the woman, who in turn opened a can of whoop-ass on the metal matriarch, punching her in the face and sending her to hospital. Let's hope they caught the whole thing on camera for the show, huh? And finally, more retro TV coming to the big screen. David Hasselhoff will serve as executive producer for a Knight Rider feature film. The 80s drama starred Hasselhoff as the owner of Kit, a crime-busting, high-tech, smart-ass Pontiac Trans Am. No word yet on who will fill Big Dave's shoes for the lead role. And more on that uh, Sharon Osbourne thing, it turns out this woman <laughs> won a raffle at a party that they right. threw, uh, at a charity party, won a necklace, and then it was found out later she was party crashing. So they asked her to leave, she left, but she took the necklace with her, so they hooked up again at this uh, dinner, and well... Well, Sharon will have to put some good makeup yeah, on. Yeah, she's got some punch marks, apparently. In her apparently. Face. And I thought she would actually do the whoop out. You'd figure, yeah. yeah. All right. All right, George, and it's time for checking the forecast. Harold's off tonight, so I've got all your weather details, and it's looking pretty good, actually, if you've been out there recently. It's uh, fairly warm still. 17 degrees with the winds coming out of the west, southwest at 27 to 37 kilometers an hour. Your humidity is sitting at 41%. The barometric pressure, 101.6 kilopascals. Today's highs reach 21, lows dipping down to a nice mild 10. Air quality index, 20 or good. Tomorrow's UV index getting a little higher there. It's 5.3 or moderate. Let's take a look at tonight's lows now as we go across southern Ontario. We're going to see plus 6 in Kingston tonight, Belleville as well, 8 in Peterborough, 7 in Ottawa and Petawawa, Sudbury, North Bay, and up in uh, Cottage Country, we'll see 8, 9 in Barrie and Owen Sound, 10 degrees here in Toronto, Hamilton, the Falls, and in Kitchener, Waterloo, and Godrich, London and Sarnia, we'll see 10, 12 in Windsor. Tomorrow's highs are fantastic, 28 degrees in Windsor, 27 in Sarnia, as well as Godrich, London, right across Kitchener, Waterloo. 25 degrees there. Niagara Falls, Hamilton here in Toronto will all see temperatures of 25. As well up in Cottage Country, Owen Sound, Barrie, Muskoka area, it'll be a little cooler at 23. 17 up in North Bay, Sudbury, Belleville, all the rest will see 25. Taking a look now across our uh, five-day forecast on 25 tomorrow with sun and cloud. Wednesday, six uh, showers will move in with cloudy skies. On Thursday, same, it'll be a cooler day with cloud and showers. On Friday, It'll start to go up. We'll see a mix of sun and cloud with 8. And on Saturday, it gets nice and uh, sunny for your weekend. We'll see sunny skies and highs of 12. A little more City Pulse tonight, straight ahead, right after this break. A viewer named Eve writes, Mike Weir winning the Masters was a major triumph for Canada. So why aren't we celebrating? He most certainly deserves some applause from the public. 
and a viewer named Mel adds, congratulations, Mike, on winning the Masters Tournament. What a huge triumph. It's great to see a Canadian wearing the green jacket. Good morning, angels. Good morning, Charlie. Sunday. Lucy Liu, Drew, and Diaz, too. Action doesn't get any hotter than this. And that chicken your... Charlie's Angels. Nine Sunday. Bond City. People say that Brad J. Lamb is obsessed with condos. They're probably right. Brad J. Lamb Realty, bringing more Toronto condo buyers and sellers together. All American Girl, back-to-back -back episodes starting at 8 Thursday on City. Never stop thinking. Find out what's really going on. Read the Globe and Mail, where perspective is everything. Wednesday, a dirty little secret gets revealed. Yeah, she has a boyfriend. But some of the girls are crying foul. There's a mini sabotage. A special two-hour episode, The Bachelor. Nine Wednesday on City, brought to you by Rimmel London. Get it on. I'm Gord Martineau, tracking the SARS outbreak, what experts are saying in Toronto and around the world. The developments nightly on City Pulse at 6. I gotta say chocolate. My favorite would be wild venison. Uh, that would be great with quail, Thai foods, freshly shucked oysters. Something that's a little on the rich side. Probably a hamburger. Risotto. Blueberry cheesecake. Camembert, just like this one. A nice, spicy steak. Mmm, break of lamb. Veal Rossini with chanterelle mushrooms. Any day. Porterhouse. You know what? I like it in a glass or by itself. The wines of Ontario. As much character as the people who make them. How do you know who to trust with your life savings? Building a nest egg for your retirement takes hard work and wise investing. You want your money to be in good hands. So if you're ever presented with an investment opportunity that sounds suspicious... Call the people looking out for you. The Ontario Securities Commission regulates the investment industry and helps protect investors like you from frauds and scams. Before you put your hard-earned money into a new investment, check with the OSC. They're here to help. Just before we go, let's update tonight's headlines. A new cluster of SARS cases previously thought to be unrelated leaves 500 members of a religious group in quarantine and health officials changing rules so doctors must presume anyone showing symptoms has the virus. The Quebec Liberals sweep to a massive majority government booting out the Parti Québécois after nine years in power. And your Maple Leafs win big in Game 3 with a double overtime 4-3 victory over the Flyers down at the ACC. And some stories to watch for tomorrow on City Pulse. Finance Minister Janet Ecker answers questions from the business community about the Ontario budget. And parent group People for Education gives Premier Eve some advice on the throne speech. Next Breakfast Television. We'll be watching what's happening on the streets, update you every 15 minutes. She's been known as the kept woman, the fancy woman, the other woman, the history of mistresses. Breakfast television, weekdays starting at 6 a.m. That's this edition of City Pulse tonight. Watch for updates overnight on BT, City Pulse at noon and 6. Until then, thanks for tuning in. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow.